Hello, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. I'm Vishwaras Doshi, a graduate student in the Operations Research Graduate Program at North Carolina State University. The work that I will be presenting today is in collaboration with my advisor, Dr. Do Young Yoon of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at NC State, and is titled Field Effect Approximation by Interacting Random Walks. As the title suggests, this work is about the approximation of a quantity known as a field vector. But before I get into what that actually is, let me start off by first addressing the random walk part of the title. Random walk based algorithms such as Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithms and their various extensions have been popular for estimating information about large graph structures. This is largely because they have advantages over their deterministic counterparts in scenarios where the entire graph is not known beforehand and needs to be explored first. And often this exploration is only possible by traversing the edges between the nodes of the graph. Sometimes the graph sizes can be so large that storing them efficiently is a challenge in itself. These graphs could also experience topological changes over time, and it is usually difficult for deterministic algorithms to account for these dynamical changes. Examples of such graphs can be online social networks such as Facebook and Twitter, road networks such as ones we see on Google Maps and the World Wide Web, and random walk based algorithms because of their inherently light and distributed nature tend to perform well in such scenarios. Now, all these random walk based algorithms rely on convergence to the stationary distribution, pi, of the underlying Markov chain. This stationary distribution is actually the first or the principal or leading eigenvector of the Markov chain kernel. And at this point, we pretty much know everything about the vector pi. However, what about the other eigenvectors of the Markov chain kernel? To the best of our knowledge, no random walk based techniques as of now talk about convergence to these higher order eigenvectors. Even the recently developed non Markovian Monte Carlo technique, for example, uh, which is used for sampling from direct graphs, is about convergence to the leading eigenvector of a substochastic Markov chain group. In our work, we focus on the second eigenvector, V2, and we provide a random walk based framework for, for approximating the second eigenvector of any time reversible Markov chain. Now, what is this field law vector that the title mentions? In what is to follow, I first talk about the field law vector and some of its applications. I then explain our random walk based approach to approximating the field law vector. Finally, ending with some simulation results to show how a framework can be used, followed by the conclusion. The field law vector is defined as the eigenvector corresponding to the second smallest eigenvalue of a graph Laplacian matrix. There are three main types of graph Laplacian matrices uh, the combinatorial Laplacian, the random walk Laplacian, and the symmetric Laplacian. But let's first focus on the combinatorial Laplacian and its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. As shown, the first eigenvalue is zero, and the vector of all ones is the corresponding eigenvector. It is the eigenvalue eigenvector equation, however, for the second eigenpair that we are interested in, where uh, V2 is the field vector, and lambda2 corresponds to the algebraic connectivity of the graph. Let me now summarize the practical importance of this eigenvector. Consider the problem of partitioning a graph into two subgraphs in an optimal manner. So something of uh, this sort. There are various interpretations of the word optimal, one of them leading to the ratio cut problem. This problem involves minimizing the ratio cut objective function over every possible subgraph of this graph and is therefore an, an NP-hard integer problem. An equivalent form of this integer problem has a real value relaxation, which is solved by the field of vector V2. Thus, a powerful heuristic to solve the problem is obtained by partitioning the graph according to the signed entries of the field of vector. Partitioning according to signed entries of higher order eigenvectors actually forms the basis of spectral clustering, which is a well-known method of obtaining K clusters on a graph. The field vector also finds applications in problems such as envelope reduction, which is a problem for reordering uh, sparse matrices in order to improve the performance of solvers. 
and even graph drawing, where it is used to help visualize uh, a, a graph on a two-dimensional surface. We now consider the problem of approximating the field vector. This is actually the same as approximating the eigenvector corresponding to the second largest eigenvalue of the continuous time Markov change kernel, Q, is equal to negative L, where L stands for the combinatorial Laplacian. Note that even though we demonstrate our approach for the combinatorial Laplacian, as an extension, our framework works as is for any time reversible Markov chain kernel, including other, other kinds of graph Laplacian matrices. We now go on and describe our stochastic process. Consider two different groups of n random walkers each. We call them, we call this group X or group Y, uh, which have type X or type Y walkers uh, given by blue and red colors respectively. Each of these walkers walks on the graph according to a continuous time Markov chain given by Q is equal to minus L. So a blue walker could walk from node two to node one at rate Q21 at any given time instance. Now, this means that at node two, at node one, there are now three red walkers and two blue walkers. This is what we actually call an interaction and we design it to be competitive in nature. We say that every red walker kills every blue walker with rate kappa over n, and every blue walker in turn kills every red walker with the same rate. So overall, there is sort of like a competitive interaction going on at node one, which will result in a few walkers eventually dying or being killed by the walker of the opposing group. Suppose that it is a blue walker over here that has been killed. We wish to preserve the number of walkers over the graph at all times. And to do this, if a walker dies, we relocate it over the graph to the position of one of the other uh, walkers of the same type. So for example, there's a blue walker here, which has been killed at node one. We redistribute it to the position of one of its friends, another blue walker. This is also the same as redistributing according to the density distribution of blue walkers. And we also do the same thing if a red walker has been killed. This is only a brief in intuitive overview of the process and the exact details are left to our paper. The stochastic process mentioned in the previous slide is a continuous time Markov chain. And at any given state, we can actually fill out precisely its transition rate matrix. Here, Q bar subs X from J to I represents the rate at which a type X walker would move from node J to I. Similarly, Q bar subs Y from J to Y would be the rate at which a type Y walker would move from J to I. And this rate is actually uh, divided into two parts. It can either be attributed to the underlying Markov chain of the process, and due to the interaction, the kill plus redistribute mechanism described previously. We wish to analyze the convergence properties of this continuous time Markov chain, given by little x raised to n and little y raised to n, which are the density distributions of the type x and type y walkers respectively at any given time t. In order to do that, we consider the following system of ordinary differential equations. These equations were derived by examining the so-called mean field of a continuous time process. What this means is that we took summation over all possible jumps of a stochastic process multiplied by the rate at which each jump can occur. Here, by jump, we mean uh, type X walkers moving from node J to I or type Y walkers moving from node J to I. We proved that for sufficiently large number of walkers, trajectories of this stochastic process actually closely follows the solutions of this particular deterministic system over a finite time horizon. The deterministic system is then called the fluid limit of a stochastic process. And it's called so because uh, we take the limit as n goes to infinity. We further consider the following uh, ODE system, which is derived by subtracting 
the two ODE equations from the previous slide for x of t and y of t. This is therefore more of an implicit ODE system. And we also note that any trajectory of the system is always orthogonal to one, the first eigenvector of the Laplacian matrix. Every fixed point of the system, z star, also satisfies an eigenvalue eigenvector equation while also being orthogonal to one. This means that any fixed point of this particular system is either zero or it is an eigenvector of minus q, which is a combinatorial graph Laplacian. By constructing a particular Lapinov, Lapinov function, we then go on to prove that for sufficiently large kappa, the field of vector v2 is the only stable fixed point of this ODE system. It is also globally attractive. So to briefly summarize what we did so far, we constructed a stochastic process involving two groups of random walkers, which compete and kill each other, and then redistribute over the graph according to the identity distributions, which is sort of similar in flavor to vertex reinforced random walk system. So, so far we have shown that the deterministic fluid limit of a stochastic process converges to the field vector. But this is actually not really enough for us. For our practical use, we still need to tie things up and consider how this influences the behavior of a stochastic process over the long run, instead of just over a finite time horizon. By citing to some literature, we show that our stochastic process will actually never stick around any unstable solution of the ODE system in the previous slide for too long. It will eventually spend nearly all its time in only a small neighborhood around the asymptotically stable fixed point V2, which is the Fiedler vector. This is actually great news for us, since it allows us to approximate the Fiedler vector by averaging z raised to n of t, uh, by subtracting the density distributions of type x and type y walkers. And we believe that it should provide a good approximation of the Fiedler vector over the long run. To test this, we turn to simulating a stochastic process over a few graphs. But before we show the actual simulation results, let me first showcase a visualization of our framework as it progresses over time. The figure to the left is a color map where the blue and red entries correspond to the positive and negative entries of the field vector of the combinatorial graph Laplacian matrix. This field vector is computed separately, completely offline. Here, the intensity of the colors at each node represents the value of the field vector entry at that node. The figure on the right is the initial approximation of the field vector at time t is equal to zero at the very beginning of our framework. As time progresses, we observe the progression of our framework as it eventually gives a partition similar to that obtained by the field vector. To better observe this convergence, we keep track of two metrics, the Rayleigh quotient, which converges to lambda two, the algebraic connectivity of the graph, if and only if our estimator converges to the field vector, and also the cosine similarity, which converges to one, indicating alignment of our estimator with the field vector. A more detailed uh, description of our simulation setup can be found in our paper. The following plots show the simulation results for two graphs of different sizes, one uh, with 62 nodes and 159 edges, and the other with about 4,000 nodes and 90,000 edges. For both graphs, we can observe convergence to the field vector using both the Rayleigh quotient and the cosine similarity. It should be noted that even for a small number of random walkers, that is n is equal to 25, for a graph of over 4,000 nodes, we can still observe convergence. This implies that the number of random walkers actually does not have to be very high in order for a framework to work well. We also simulate the case where the topology of the graphs changes dynamically. This is done by deleting nodes of the graphs over time while also maintaining the connectivity of the graph. 
This ensures that our framework stays on track and converges strictly over time to the field of vector, not deviating off course. And this also highlights the robustness of our framework, even when the graphs are dynamic in nature. In conclusion, we note that in this work, we have detailed the construction of a stochastic process based on multiple interacting random walks. We designed an interacting mechanism between two groups of random walkers where they complete, compete over, over a graph, such that it helps us go beyond approximating just the leading eigenvector of Markov chain kernels. And we use it to approximate the second eigenvector of any time reversible Markov chain kernel and graph of blushes. This is all. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay safe.